Sponsored by True Tech Tools. TrueTechTools.com. Well, that looks like a pretty straightforward reason why we have a full secondary drain pan. We'll see if uh, we can resolve that. So I picked up this Atwood bilge pump from Walmart of all places the other day and uh, put some one inch corrugated tubing on it so that I can hopefully do this. Take that corrugated tubing squeeze it onto the P-trap maybe it looks like I may want to get a barbed fitting that'll accept that connection a little bit better but it's just a hand pump and uh, we'll see how it goes did pretty good it can only clear the water so much nice and I guess that's the drawback I'd say it's a pretty decent budget option I think the pump was maybe 20 bucks but uh, yeah this one's by Atwood and I think it works pretty good. I may actually have to extend this since this trap is not going to reach all the way back there. That's not a coupling. That's a piece of one inch PVC. So since I need an extension anyway, I'll go grab an extension. The uh, float switch doesn't look like it was straight in the first place. But when I get back with the extension, I'll confirm what the float switch wiring is doing. extension then and you know what I forgot a cap confirm what's going on here grab a cap it looks like float switch breaks red so that should be kosher got an X13 motor up here or full variable excuse me um, so we'll, we'll turn it on and then we'll lift the float switch and see if it indeed will shut the system down. So like a jackass. I haven't uh, replenished my stock of three-quarter caps. In that case, I will tape it off. 
and then we'll see if we can get the rest of this water out with the shop back. And that's why I got the bilge pump. So I'm not limited to this crap. But we're going to go ahead and test this. Pretty sure I already heard refrigerant stop running. And all we should have left is the blower delay. Alright, I'm going to go dump this water and let the unit shut itself off with the float switch upside down. Alright, so float switch does shut the system down. And I just filled up my second bucket of uh, water. So, I'm satisfied that we're safe for operation. And I guess we'll try one more bucket. See if we can get any more water out of it. I'm going between common and yellow. I've got 27 volts there. I got 3.9 volts between common and black. 26.8 on common and orange. But what's interesting is that I've actually got 8.7 volts between ground and the yellow wire at the thermostat bundle. Ten point four on ground and the white wire at the thermostat bundle, and ten point oh or nine something on the black. So it would appear that we've actually got a fairly significant short. I'm actually getting shocked when I try to touch the unit, and the system won't start. Um, between ground and common, I got nothing. Ground and yellow, 27. So, it looks like we've got a short somewhere. And it's back feeding. If I go straight to the contactor, I've got nothing. We've got plenty of pressure at 227 PSI, so we're not out on a pressure switch. Yellow and black is our outgoing contactor. And we got 27 volts there too. So even though we don't have a pressure switch fault, it appears that we have a pressure switch that's actually keeping us from going. This bundle right here is in line with our contactor. So I'm gonna cut that out and see if I can bypass one of the pressure switches just to confirm. Okay. So it looks like our yellow with the black line coming into this bundle is coming off of the board feeding the first pressure switch which is the two red wires up here and then the yellow with the red stripe is the other pressure switch. I'm going to guess, since I'm not getting a tingle right now, that uh, 
we're losing our signal at the red pressure switch because we have it on yellow with a black stripe we just don't have it at the yellow with the red stripe Here goes nothing. Hmm. Is that our fault right there? That pressure switch has got to be the one failing on us. Because I have common to here I got 27 volts but I don't have any voltage at the contactor we'll pull the low voltage off for this next line of fun and I wonder if we just lost our 10 volts no We've still got our 10 volts. Alright, we're going to do continuity. I don't think you can hear that, but we get a tone right here. If we take red to red, we get a tone. But if we take yellow with the red stripe to the contactor, we don't get a tone. So what I'm going to do is pull the spade off of this terminal and uh, put a spade on the red one and splice that in so that we have a pressure switch to get us running. All right, I'm going to go grab my spades. All right, so just throw a spade connector on that red wire on the opposite side of that float switch. Push that onto the other side of our contactor. And we're going to plug the uh, board back in, so we're probably going to start making some noise. So with an 8 degree subcool and a 37 degree superheat, I was a little more concerned that the expansion valve had not been changed despite all the notes on the unit saying that it was converted for 410A. can't find any markings on it to confirm whether it is or isn't. The stickers say it was converted to 410A, but I can't find any information on it. Okay, let's go see what the charge is doing now. So we got a design subcooling of 10 plus or minus 3. We're fluttering around to 8. We might be able to add a little bit of refrigerant and get it to a perfect 10. But since they're not complaining about performance, we're going to make recommendations and go from there.
Son, man, I see you walking Through this cold, cold night 